let's assume that we are a service provider with hundreds or maybe thousands of clients and we need to provide layer 2 connectivity to different locations for those customers. So we can go with a VPN, we can use MPLS, or we can use VXLAN. This is a pretty cool protocol that now is supported in Router OS 7. In this video, you will learn how to configure VXLAN from scratch on my routing devices. Welcome to the network trip. So VXLAN stands for Virtual Extensible Local Area Network. VXLAN is defined in the request for comments 7348. You want to go deeper with all the technical specification, you can look for that file and then you will get a 20 page document with all the specifications about VXLAN. But just to keep this simple, VXLAN is basically gonna provide layer two overlay on a layer three network. So it sounds amazing. And it's a pretty simple solution that we can apply in our provider's network. For example, in this case, we can see the IP network in the center. There we can have any amount of router. We can be running OFPF, we can be running BGP, RIP, EIGRP, any of the dynamic routing protocols or even a static routing. The point here is that we'll have a special device that is gonna be the BX LAN tunnel endpoint. So in this case, those are gonna be a my routing device. And we only need to install those my routing devices and those will become the BTEPs. Basically, the idea is that VXLAN is going to create a tunnel between those two sites. And now we can be sending traffic from this location to the other. Once the traffic is hitting the IP network, the traffic will be encapsulated. VXLAN will identify the traffic by using a 24-bit identifier and that is called the VXLAN network identifier or VNI. That means that we can have 2 to the power of 24 different VXLAN. That's more than 16 million VXLAN. If we compare that to the 4000 VLAN, that is a huge difference. From the perspective of the provider, all the networks beyond the BTEP are hidden. That means that the user can send traffic from different networks and basically that is not going to overlap with any other customer. The good news is that we don't need to modify anything inside our IP network. All the configuration is going to be in those devices, the BTEPs. Let's take a look at the topology. So in this case, we are managing the provider's network. So inside that square, we can have several routers. We can be running OFPF, BGP, EIGRP. We can have my routing devices, Cisco devices, or any vendor devices. The point here is that we can have customers and those customers can request a layer to tunnel from one location to the other. In this case, we'll use VXLAN to provide that solution. Currently, I have OFPF implemented in the provider's network. If you wanna learn how to configure OFPF, please check the video above. R1, R2, R3, and R4 are OFPF neighbors. They are exchanging routing information. I have two customers, the company A and company B. Company A is connected to R2. The idea here is that we'll add an additional customer edge router and we'll create a transparent tunnel between those two locations. In that way, any device connected to either two 
in the remote location will share the same broadcast domain than the local area network in the client's one location. And that connectivity will travel over a layer 3 network running OFPF. The configuration is extremely simple once we get the idea about how VXLAN works. This is R2. If we check the interfaces, we have Ether1, that is the interface that is connected to the OFPF device. Ether2 is connected to the client A, and Ether3 is connected to the client B. So here we are simply running OFPF. We have all the adjacencies, and we have the routing table with information for the remaining routers in the provider's network. So now we'll get focus on the connection going to client A, to the company A. So that's Ether2. So if I check the IP address in that interface, that is 10.2.2.1. So let's check the configuration in the client A1. So if we go to the router, basically here we have the traditional one and LAN topology. Ether1 is connected to our network. And then Ether2 is connected to the internal network. Additionally, we are using NAT in this device because this is how we typically configure customers. So all the traffic leaving the network on the interface Ether1 will be NATed. So basically, we live with the IP configured in the interface facing our network, the provider's network. This is just, this is just a typical internet connection that we provide to our users. The process to configure VXLAN in MicroTik devices is pretty straightforward. We only need to complete two steps. The first one is going to create a virtual interface and that interface is going to be created under interface VXLAN. We only need two mandatory fields. The first one is the name, the second one VNI. The VNI is a number, remember that we have 2 to the power of 24 options. In our lab, I'm going to use 100. That is a unique identifier per customer. Then, once we have defined the interface, we need to add the remote VTEPs. VXLAN can have just one remote VTEP or can have multiple remote VTEPs. So we can have a point to multipoint topology. So in this case, we are going to add those VTEPs and here we are going to specify the interface that we want to use and then we'll specify the IP on the remote VTEP. That IP must be reachable. Once we are aware of the steps that we'll complete, we can go to the terminal and then we'll go to the menu interface VXLAN. So now we'll add a new virtual interface for VXLAN and the name is going to be VXLAN 100. The next value is going to be the VNI. We'll use 100 for our lab. And then we can specify the port number, but this value is optional. If I only press enter, I will use the default value, the UDP 8472. You want to change the port, you can add a keyboard port and then you can set the value that you want. So the next step is to add the remote VTEP. So I will go to VTEPs and I will use the previously created interface VXLAN and I will set the remote IP. If I check the diagram, in our case, the remote IP is going to be the IP in that interface in the site 2 because now we are configuring that router and the other IP is going to be 10.3.2.2. So basically that's the IP that I need to up there and we can press enter. At this point we have an interface for VXLAN and also we have added one remote VTEP. Remember we can have more than one. We can continue adding more remote VTEPs. So the next step is going to be to bridge that virtual interface to one physical port in this device. The idea now is that we need to bridge 
the VXLAN interface to one physical interface in that device. In this case, I'm going to use Ether2 because there is a computer in our topology that is connected to that port. And this is going to allow to extend that broadcast domain to the interface that we picked in the second location. And here we only need to create a new bridge and we'll add as members those two ports. So I'm going to say bridge-lan and I will include the virtual interface VXLAN and then I will include Ether2 and now I can click OK. So now we have that bridge with two ports on it, the virtual interface and the physical port that will allow extending that broadcast domain over our provider's network. So now all the configuration, all the IPs, the ACP servers must be running on the master interface, in this case, the bridge LAN interface. So I will update the IP address and I will change the interface. I'll change the interface from Ether2 to bridge LAN. And now to make this easier, I will add a DACP server on the LAN interface. So I'm going to IP, the ACP server, then the ACP setup. And I will pick the bridge LAN interface and we can follow the wizard. And now we have a functional DACP server running on the interface bridge LAN. So I'm going to the Winbox now. We have this device. This is the client A-2 device. So first of all, I need to check the previous configuration. So I have a one interface, Ether1, that is connected to the provider's network. If I check the IP addresses, we don't have an IP address. So I will configure that 10.3.2.2 slash 24 as specified in the network diagram. And that is going to be on the Ether1 interface. Now I need to add a default gateway. So this is just a regular configuration for your clients with internet connection. So the default gateway is going to be 10.3.2.1. Additionally, this device is going to NAT all the traffic that is going from the LAN to internet. So we need to go to IP, Firewall, then NAT, Source NAT, and all the traffic leaving on the interface Ether1 will get the action masquerade. So that's the traditional source NAT. I can add some DNS servers to this device. So I will add that one from Google and then from Cloudflare. And now this device must have internet connectivity. And we can see that we have access to internet in this device. So this is going to be the initial state that we'll find in this remote location. So now let's configure the VXLAN interface. So we the first command that I need is interface, then VXLAN. And I need to add a new virtual interface with name VXLAN 100 and the VNI is going to be 100. Next step is to add the remote VTEP. In our case, the remote VTEP from the perspective of the second location is going to be the location number one. So the IP in the one interface here is going to be 10.2.2.2. So I need to set that IP as the remote VTEP. So I'm going to VTEPs and then I will add the interface VXLAN 100, the one that we have just created. And then the remote IP is going to be 10.2.2.2. Now I press enter and we are ready with the VXLAN interface and also the remote VTEP for the second location. I'm just going to create a bridge. Let's call that one bridge LAN. And then I will add two ports, Ether2 and the second one, the VXLAN interface. If everything is configured as expected, the computer in the remote location must be able to reach the DACP server on the main location. And that will validate that the broadcast domain has been extended over the OFPF domain. So let's check now. So I can go to this computer 
This is just a virtual PC here on EVENG. And I can say IP DHCP. That computer got the IP 192.168.1.254. If I go to the computer in the main location and I do the same process, IP DHCP, we must get an IP from the same network. So at this point, we have this computer in the remote location, the one on the left, on the main location. If I try to ping from the main location to the remote location, you can see that those devices have IP connectivity and also they are in the same broadcast domain. If I go to the router in the first location and I check the leases under the DACP server, I must see two entries there. So this is the router in the main location. If I go to IP, the ACP server, then leases, you can see that I have the IP 253 and 254, and those are the IPs. On the main location, you can see that this is connected to Ether 2, but the second computer is connected to VXLAN 100. VXLAN is working as expected. It's creating this layer 2 tunnel over our OFPF network. I hope this video has been informative for you and I see you in the next one. Thank you.